Okay guys, so I'm going to do a quick video on Schlage again, and you know my version of quick video sometimes isn't so quick, but I've got several things out here, and this is kind of a spin-off of that other video that I just posted of keying up Schlage cylinders, uh, since there was a lot of discussion on the cylinders, the cap style compressible cylinders, so I decided to kind of focus on that and what else Schlage has going on. So to start off, we're going to look at the old F-Series. The old F-Series is distinguishable because it has a hole on both sides of the outer thing. So you have to kind of figure out which side the retainer is when you're taking the knob off. And it's also distinguishable because it has a two-piece knob. And when you get it apart, you'll also see that it is a standard f series cylinder just like any other cylinder would be with the bible cap and all that okay so as i said in a few comments uh, four or five years ago about um schlage decided to change their whole f series line and they made it a one piece outer cap and at the time i think i saw on the press release or whatever they sent out on it I think they said it was to make it the same size as the outside and inner, which is really weird and kind of dumb because you can make the knob whatever size you want. But they were saying on the F-Series for a time, and it may be kind of hard to tell, but this interior knob is smaller than the exterior knob was. See the difference there? So... I'm not sure what goofy engineer decided to come up with that, but an even goofier engineer decided to come up with changing it so that the knobs were the same shape on the outside and inside, which turned out to be smaller. And when I'm holding this up, you can see the ring around it. That's kind of how you're gauging it. So while they are the same size, they also are kind of ridiculously small. Very, very small knobs. I've, I don't understand where Schlage's going with their F-Series here. But at that time, they changed to the one-piece knob with the compressible cylinder. So let's go ahead and take this apart. That is not the key that goes to that one. Got a key in here somewhere. All right, so with any F-Series knob, you take your key and you turn it to the right or the left position, locked or unlocked, and it will let you... Hey. hey. Yeah. So you can turn the key left or right to depress the retainer. Locked or unlocked will let you release it as long as the key's turned. And when you take it out, as I showed in that last video, you pull your key out and you take a pick or something. Sometimes you can just push it out through the front and it will compress that cylinder automatically like it just did there. Other times it's not so easy and you can come up on the inside with a pick and push the cap down and then push it out. If you hadn't seen that video, here it is right here. And when you get it apart, like we showed in that video, we have the, what's called the compressible spring cap. So this is where, if you service Schlage in any capacity nowadays, you really have to have these three things. One of them being the T-pins, another one being the springs, and another one being the caps. Because while they don't fail very often, they do fail. So it's a good idea to have these three items on hand. And we mostly have to have these springs. And you have to be very gentle with these springs. It's not like standard springs that you can buy, you know, in bulk for cheap from the lab they have to be this exact style of spring and that is because okay so t-pins here's your t-pins that's part number f506451 the springs was f506453 
and the caps if you need them is F506452. So the reason why you cannot use regular springs with the T-pins is because unlike traditional pins where the spring is just pushing down on the pin, focus, like that, on the T-pins it actually has to go into the end of the pin. I'm in, I'm in not a good lighting situation here. So when it's sitting in the plug, it will be like that. Can't get my camera to focus. So when they came out with the new locks, they recommended you just pry the cap off and replace everything, which of course they did do that because they want you to, uh, they want you to buy replacement caps and springs. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just pop this off for video's sake. It's not supposed to harm it. You don't really want to take this off, but you can. <laughs> it's not a, you're gonna crush a spring or two if you pop it off. Okay, there we go. All right. So if we look at the plug, We'll see the top of it here has little ridges. And on the inside of the cap, you have little bitty teeth. Yeah, much better. Okay, so what happens when you pop that cap off? Those teeth are normally like this and they bend out just a bit, which can cause future problems with the lock. So they say if you pop a cap off like that, not to reuse it. And that's a good idea, unless you have to. Now we could get this cap and we could very carefully like press down on those teeth to get them to bite a little bit better. But I would only, I would only recommend doing that if you didn't have replacement caps and it was kind of dire circumstances. So when we take these out, and presumably they, they advised, quote, advised you to do this because they were uh, they, they push towards big box. Everybody pushes towards big box for for the sale, you know, quantity over quality, I guess is the mantra now. Um, again, in that other video, we showed you to turn the key to the right. So let's go ahead and put these pins back in here. 37944, which would be three... Um, Seven, maybe? Nope. Maybe that's a four. Yeah, four, four, three, seven, nine. All right. So let me get rid of this reminder. Go away, reminder. All right, got that. And uh, pull your key out of your lock. Put it back in your cylinder. Now you're gonna take your top pins. Now these top pins are great for making challenge locks and all that other stuff, making quick set trap keys. Credit to LPL for all his videos on that. So here you're gonna drop the pin down with the T part sticking up because that spring has to drop in on top of it. And again, the spring itself will be like this. Okay, so once we get the pins in there, we come in and we stack our springs in on top of them.
Now we look at, we get our new cap. We'll come over here and get our new cap, whichever bag it's in. And on the underside of the cap, you will have these holes. And the top of the springs have to sit in each one of those holes. So while you're putting it back together, I'm going to get behind the camera here because i got to look through it. You want to balance the springs. Now it is kind of problematic because it's that nine pin right there, that's gonna make that spring stand up higher. It's uneven. So you pretty much have to balance. You pretty much don't drop, the, don't drop stuff, but you pretty much balance the, the tallest spring on top of its appropriate chamber hole. And since we're having so much trouble with focus here, you look through those holes and you should be able to kind of tell that the springs are balanced correctly. So once you get them all balanced, you push down until it snaps into place. Now see there, there's an issue. Okay. What issue do we have? Okay. Well, we gotta make sure we're gonna look in here, get our little flashlight. We're gonna make sure all of those springs are lined up on there. See, that, that can cause an issue with these. So once you've verified that all those springs are lined up in their holes and not veering off, bouncing out. So once we've verified that it works and it springs up and down correctly and doesn't grab, uh, as in the other video, we look for the open slot in the top we squeeze the bottle down oh well we put our fatal mistake we put our clip back on and find our open slot slip the cylinder in there make sure it comes out the hole here use your key just the tip of the key to hold it into a stable position while you wiggle the cylinder and get it to slide in and then use something you can take the key out use the key to depress it and it'll go halfway put your key in turn it either way and make sure your key locks and unlocks it so that is the compressible style cylinders uh, as some of the comments mentioned, nobody's really fond of these, but that's what we have to live with because that's what Schlage makes now. Yes, there are other designs. Yes, there are other locks that are made better, but the design, it's a, it's, it's a big box. It's a mass market thing. It's something that's out there. Your knobs aren't really supposed to be your security. Yes, you can. Yes, there are tools that are used to pop off the caps. Yes, there are ways to get past that easily, but that's why they were, that's why everybody, one, one reason why everybody recommends that you always have a deadbolt on your door. So I'm going to, in the spirit of conservation, I'm going to put these other springs up before I start <clears throat> because I kind of hoard these a little bit so, uh, more so than I do regular springs so be sure to buy you at least those three items because regular lab springs again won't work okay now we're going to move on to deadbolts 
There is basically one kind of deadbolt on the mass market today, and that's the B60, B62. If you want to get technical, B60N, B62N. I don't know what the letters are on the end of it. I don't really care, but it's the B60 and B62. So when these first came out, when they first redesigned them from the Schlage uh, 360 series which uses a horrible latch I've also got another video on the difference the, the year differences of Schlage if you want to check that out so the biggest thing about that when they changed it was the latch they made an awesome latch this is the best latch on the market right now for residential use it's a bigger diameter 15% bigger than regular locks it is very beefy steel body roll pin for the uh, changing mechanism when you need to switch it from very easy to change from two and three eighths to two and three quarter people don't chisel it deeper just twist it it makes it long instantly you don't have to go to a lot of trouble to change the back set um, very beefy mechanism here I've yet to see one of these break uh, I've yet to see one breaking a door kick in either so that's kind of a no notable thing and uh, the one bad thing about it is, okay, so this is unusual. With the 626 deadbolts, it comes with your standard key strike, but it also comes with short screws. In regular, like, polished brass and dark bronze, the shift has gone to using the plates that look just like a knob plate. If we take this knob plate out, we can see the strike plate. Um, we can see that it is the same as a standard knob plate. However, the knob has a lip. The deadbolts do not. And presumably this was because some interior designer or some, somebody somewhere decided, oh, it would look better with two things hanging off the door instead of one thing with, you know, the regular strike above it. So I don't know how this came into being, but a lot of deadbolts nowadays come with this style of plate. Um, so there's not a lot of security in this with these standard strike plates you could use the the backer steel plate with the three inch screws for a lot more security with these you can't really do a whole lot so that's not that's one thing that i'm not thrilled with now this particular this particular the the 60 series the 62 and 626 finish for some reason still comes with this regular strike plate however when these first hit the market they were using the same styles of cylinders as this do i have the key that goes to this one um, i do not have the key for this but if you look at the cylinder, it's actually a solid brass cylinder. Let me go grab a shim. Okay, I don't need to take that one apart because I can take this other one apart. All right, so for a while there, they, uh, they were making these locks with the solid brass cylinders. And here in the past, oh, about a year and a half or so, they have changed it to... They're all held in the same same design pretty much as this except for now it's one piece held together whereas these had a separate housing around it um, but you could still screw the cylinder out and we'll go ahead and screw the cylinder out even though I can't I don't have anything to take it apart but we'll just show you it's the exact same size cylinder in fact you can take say you had cylinders um, if you wanted to upgrade the cylinders on your B60 deadbolt, you could do so very easily because you could take the real brass cylinders and put in there. Or you could take... Say you wanted to switch it out to an Everest cylinder. Obviously, it's made by Schlage, so it'll most likely fit. But this is kind of a standard cylinder shape and size. So you can see, since this is a six pin, it does stick out a little bit further. That may affect... This tailpiece, when you're putting it on a door, you may have to cut a little bit of this tailpiece off because with it sticking further into the lock and you've got a double cylinder, those two tailpieces might hit. So you may have to cut just a bit of this off to make it work when you're using a six pin cylinder. But as you can see, you can very easily 
change it out to whatever Schlage style cylinder and awesome Medico. Everybody makes Schlage cylinders. So you can change it out to any high security cylinder you want. And it actually is not a bad idea to do because if we look at this cute little cylinder here, as of, like I said, about a year and a half ago, they, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, they use power machinery to tighten these caps down. I think their, I think their robot got a little crazy on this one. Ugh. Ah, okay. Just for a point of reference. You can use a wiser tool to help you get that off. Doesn't fit perfectly, but it does fit. So what we're gonna come to <clears throat> is kind of the point of the video. And uh, keys. Is that not the right keys for this one? It's not the right keys for this one. We will take a look at this cylinder and let's move this camera over here. And we will see that it is by far a solid brass cylinder. And this presumably is Zamac. There's our trap pins if you wanna make a trap key. And our drill plate, which Surprisingly, they did leave in there. Luckily, they did because this metal is way softer than brass. I'm worried about longevity with these cylinders. Not here, really, but more in this area. I'm worried about the caps giving out. Look at these cast lines, too. And look at, the, look at how it's shaped. If you see, it's got those two sides are flat. See how it's got a flat on each side? So that's kind of weird, but if we look, we can see that they conveniently chamfered that plug for us. And you know why they did that? They did that because big box stores can't make fucking keys. And they want keys to work even if they're cut really bad. Eight, three, seven, eight, four. Nine, four, eight, nine, five. Eight three seven eight four. Nine four eight nine five. So, I don't really have to explain much further than that. I think we can all read into what's happening there. Eight, three, seven, eight, four. Lock, unlock. Nine. Four, eight, one depth deep, one depth deeper all the way. Little catchy, but just a little bit of manipulation. One depth deeper across the board. Still works. Look at that. Just by kind of pulling out just a bit. Barely. I don't have to pull out a lot to make it work. 
Okay, so like I said, we can all read into that. So what do you do? What, what if you don't want one of those? What if you want a lock with actual cylinders in it? Well, you can do that too. You can get the B560 series. We're gonna move all this out the way and to, 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 tend to it tomorrow. The 560 series is much better in several ways. Number one, it comes with this wonderful, wonderful strike plate. Number two, it comes with the regular strike cover plate. Number three, it comes with three inch screws to fasten that. Number four, it is two heavy screws holding it in and then the face plates held on with simply two small screws. So that kind of gives you four screw protection. So if you were to drill through here and hit these screws, you would have to literally drill them totally out of its holder here. Whereas most of the time when you hit these with the drill bit from this side, you can make it unscrew. Well, this is only gonna unscrew so far before it hits the in, inner part of the cap and then it's not gonna go anywhere. That's gonna make it a lot harder to, to drill for the screws. And if we take it apart, we can see that we have solid brass cylinders. Now this one is circa on the box right there. 9916, 8916, so 2016. I bought these as a special order last year. I'm gonna hope that they still make them with solid brass cylinders, but I have not ordered any 560 lately. But we can see this is our traditional good solid brass cylinder. It's actually an Everest prep cylinder ready to go for Everest as well, and they just use the Schlage C core. So good quality cylinder we can go ahead and take it off and make sure that we don't have the same problems as the other one let's see if they've let's see if they've monkeyed around with the the chamfer on it just to make big box store keys work better again that's just presumably um, but you I think everybody here knows how bad that they could where'd my plug follower go uh, where did my flag follower go? There it is. Um, and look at this. This is even a Everest style cylinder. Like it's a C keyway, but it's an Everest plug, Everest cut. So presumably, however, they're doing their cylinders minus the part for the Everest pin. But we can see that it is nice, sharp edges and solid brass. So there are several reasons to get a 560 over the 60 series. This will come out if you've got a smaller hole. The shield comes off just like the shield comes off for the other one. Say if you are retrofitting a deadbolt and it's got the small hole on the door. Now, ideally, you would just re-drill it, but, you know, some people don't want to pay the cost for that or don't have the skill for it if they're DIY. So, they did make this so you could lose the shield, which is a protection against what's called ice pick attacks. And you could mount this in a small hole without the shield. It still provides this lip, which kind of gives you some stability on the door. But having this shield is kind of a nice option. And if we take this one, we look at the 60 series, also has the shield. There's some plastic components here involved. Um, this patented snap-in feature, which actually does surprisingly work well. A lot better than the 360 series snap-in feature. But on this shield, if you were to use it on a small door, you unscrew that screw, and then there are notches, and you have to turn this notch on each side there's one small notch and uh, just one small notch so you take that small notch turn it to that and lift it out to put it back on you would angle it in underneath the wide notch and turn it until you locate your narrow notch and then line up the screw so good to keep those on for ice pick attacks but once we take this off and we look at it sitting on the door 
This one is much, the 560 is much sleeker. This on battery just went kaput. So I'm gonna finish this up on the GoPro. And uh, what we were talking about was this shield. It, it looks a lot sleeker with the 560 series Devolt. I'm not able to look through a screen anymore. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it. We're almost done here. Um, but you can see it looks a lot sleeker if you go with the 560 series. In addition to all the other security features that come with it. Uh, the retail cost is normally about 15 more dollars, so not a bad over cost for that. Pretty worth it in my opinion. Um, so that's going to lead us to, lastly, Schlage by Dexter. Again, I don't know what our screen looks like here, but Schlage by Dexter. This is their value series line. Now this is the same style of cross style latch that you see on a lot of other like defiant or um, any any other number of, of locks that are out on the market today that uses this plus tailpiece style it is a fairly robust latch it's got an anti-saw pin of you never really see these sawed except for firefighters that do it to break into stuff um, but it's smaller regular size diameter compared to the beefier bolt you can see the difference there and you can just overall tell the difference and we get it out I never use those that is the little deal to convert it to drive in only use those if you're working on a trailer, which is technically really the only reason you need them. Okay, we see the value series. Schlage by Dexter, Zamac again. Uses your standard, you see this across the board from LSDA to Defiant to um, any number of, you know, off brands. Um, pretty much just exactly like those are made. Honestly, Ugh, that one's a little tight. So just to inspect this plug, I'll go ahead and take this clip off. And oh no, we need a we need a hollow plug follower for that one. That's all right. I got one over here. So that's the one difference in uh, these is you don't take this tailpiece off. So you got to have, if you have a solid follower, which I like solid followers, but you run across this kind of lock way too often. So we're going to grab our hollow stainless steel follower. I have gifted one of these to somebody before and uh, not many stainless steel followers out there. So we're going to look at the Zamac plug. Looks like it was made in the exact same place. There is no anti-drill plug. No anti-drill features at all. No anti-drill. But we can see just a little bit of chamfering. So presumably if we cut a 48457, it would probably work. And just for e doubters, let's go. Oh, 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 where did our where did our is this it? Nope. That one goes there. Ah, here it is. Yeah. So we have eight, five, nine, six, eight. So if we made this key say eight, six, nine, six, eight, eight, six, nine, six, eight, eight, six, nine, six, eight. Eight, six. Now, we did all depths across the board on the other one. We're only doing one depth. If we did just one depth on the other one, it would easily work the lock. And who wants to harbor a guess what's going to happen here? 85968. Smooth as butter. 859. This was off by one 
Only one cut. Which cut was it? I already forgot. Eight. Six. Nine, six, eight. Yep, that second cut. So, eight, six, nine, six, eight. Does not work at all. We cannot pull it out any little bit. Will not turn no matter what you do. So, that is several good reasons to get the top of the line 560 deadbolt, as well as just a overall discussion on Schlage locks in general. So, thanks for watching again, guys. I get to put all this up, but I'm not going to do it tonight because it is the end of the day. I'm going to put this up because it belongs in my pocket. So tomorrow morning I get to come in first thing and <laughs> refix all this. See what I do for you guys? Ah, okay. Peace!